to the boat cheat. We're looking today at electric outboards. Now I make no secret that I'm a massive fan of these. We're going to look at why, we're going to see the pros and the cons. We're going to look at the e-propulsion option and we're going to look at Torquedo and compare the features of each. We're starting this by demonstrating just how simple it is to attach an electric outboard to your tender. As you saw from the intro shots, this motor is stored on a rack in what 349 owners called the garage and lifting it out one-handed so I could film it was no problem at all. Attaching the motor to the transom is a lot simpler than it used to be with the petrol engine because it's light enough that I can sit on the swim platform with my feet in the boat and easily lift the motor onto the transom and clamp it on. Some small trolling motors are so light that the whole motor can be put on in this manner in just a few seconds. My Torquedo 1003 is in three parts and it takes me a little longer but it's very very straightforward and it's all doable with one-handed operation. Once the main motor is attached, the battery is added and the control arm is, is slotted into place, a pin is inserted to lock these into position and then the two cables are connected to the plugs mounted on the battery box. You have to take care to do these in the right order. There's a little label on top of the battery to remind you which one's first and just two plugs. They're waterproof once they're connected. Uh, those are screwed into place and you're ready to go. A magnetic kill switch sits in that little recess just below the display on the control arm and the display shows battery percentage, range, speed over ground and power being drawn in watts. The nice thing about the Torquedo is it takes your current draw and your boat speed on GPS tells you how far you can go. Now obviously there's a catch because if the current changes so will your distance but it gives you an instant readout. So right now I can do 70 kilometers. I've got the boat coming. I'm just going to speed up to get more steerage for him and when I do that it's dropped to 24 kilometers. Now clearly I'm never going to go 24 kilometers in inflatable but when you're going a kilometer each way to a pub or for a meal at a restaurant or whatever it's really nice to know you can get back. Let's now compare the Torquedo 1103 with the e-propulsion Spirit One Plus. I'm going to allocate up to five points for each feature based on my preferences and my use and my needs. Now clearly everyone will have different outcomes so you might want to create your own scoreboard as we go along. I'm going to make another video where we compare my results with that of an e-propulsion Spirit One Plus owner. Look out for that coming soon. I'm going to start with features where there are no points allocated because both are pretty much equal. Both of them have direct drive motors, that is they're on the same shaft as the propeller. This removes the need for a gearbox, making the units more efficient and simple. Both of them have magnetic kill switches so they'll stop if you go overboard. Both have four trim positions. Both of them also have a tilt position so you can lift the propeller out of the water. Both have a 240 volt charger included. Both have 12 volt charging options. Um, on the Torquedo that's from 9 to 50 volts and on the E-Propulsion from 10 to 30 volts. But for practical purposes, your boat and my boat will always either have 12 volt or 24, in my case 12. And so there's really no practical difference between these two. Both are waterproof to IP67 once the cables are connected. Both of them are maintenance free. Both have a display of real time power. Both have a display of remaining time. Which brings me to probably the most important feature and that is that both of them are much much easier to use than a petrol outboard. So ease of use is brilliant for these motors which is why I love them but they're both equally easy to use. Which brings us to features where they differ. The Torquedo has 1.1 kilowatts of max power and the e-propulsion has 1 kilowatt. Not really a big difference because I never use it at full power, so for me that's just a one point win for the Torquedo. There's a bigger difference when it comes to battery capacity, with the Torquedo having a 915 watt hour battery and the e propulsion having 1276. That's quite a difference, so I'm going to give the e propulsion three marks there. Overall weight is about the same as that for a 2.5 horsepower four stroke outboard motor, 
um, but the Torquedo here is slightly lighter at 17.3 kilos against 19.3 for the propulsion. However, handling and installing on the boat is much simpler with these electric motors because you can split the battery from the leg, install the leg on the transom, then put the battery on, makes it much easier. For its lighter weight, the Torquedo gets one mark. Price is quite important. Both are a lot dearer than a petrol engine. Be clear about that. Uh, in the UK, 2049 for the Torquedo. In the US, $29.50. Uh, uh, for the e-propulsion, $18.75 or $25.99. So about a 9% difference here with the Torquedo being dearer. E-propulsion gets the marks here. And for me, I'm going to allocate two marks. The e-propulsion's battery floats while the Torquedo's 1103's doesn't. Torquedo 603, the smaller motor, that one does float, but the 1103 we're comparing here doesn't, so e-propulsion are going to get the marks here. I've never nearly dropped a battery. I tend to be quite careful installing, so for me it's not that big a deal. I'm going to give a single mark to e-propulsion. You may have a different view depending on how you use the motor. Torquedo has a removable control arm, tiller arm. The e-propulsions is fixed and folds, and when it folds, the throttle grip just goes into the water slightly. For me, the Torquedo wins it here because I like to take the control arm off of the motor when I leave the tender tied up in a public place, and I stick that um, control arm either in my bag or in the life jacket lockers so kindly provided by the RNLI in many harbours. To me, this is worth two points. Both motors have the capability for in-use solar charging. The Torquedo can accept up to 100 watts of solar charge while in use. The e-propulsion 180 watts. I've never ever considered putting solar charging panels in my tender for the simple reason that it's not big enough. Like so many sailors I have the smallest tender I practically can in order that it takes up less space when it's folded and stowed on the boat. So it's not really a big deal for me, but I'm going to give one mark to e-propulsion for its higher solar charging capacity. Both units display battery level remaining. On the Torquedo, this is a percentage of total battery charge. On the e-propulsion, it's the voltage in the battery at the current time. I find percentage much more intuitive, so I'm giving the Torquedo two marks. Using its inbuilt GPS, the Torquedo can give an indication of boat speed either in nautical miles an hour or in kilometers per hour. For this, Torquedo gets a single mark. A much bigger benefit is that using GPS, the Torquedo gives you remaining distance, and that can be in either nautical miles or kilometers. I find this fabulously useful, particularly when doing longer journeys. Uh, for example, I recently went to a neighboring boatyard from the marina I was in because there was a Chandler's who had a part I needed, and I was able to use the remaining distance and combine that with Navionics on my phone and was able to make sure that I could cover this relatively long journey to the other marina and back in safety and with no risk of running out of battery. For me, this one is a big deal, so I'm going to give the Torquedo four marks. Country of manufacture may or may not be important to you. The Torquedo is manufactured in Germany, while the e-propulsion is manufactured in China. There are a couple of aspects to country of manufacture for me. One is that Germany, being in the EU, um, is subject to EU's um, labour laws and minimum wage provisions and social costs. And so I think it's quite important that that is accounted for because we've also got a higher price. And so it's only fair to reflect the fact that the German manufactured item is, um, for me, politically important because the people making it are getting paid a decent wage. I also like the fact that the unit will have travelled less distance to get to me. And so for me personally, being made in Germany rather than China is worth three marks. Again, I know that's a contentious one, but this is a personal view. That brings us to the total scores. Now, remember, I am a Torquedo owner, so it's no surprise I've come up with a score of 14 for the Torquedo against seven for the propulsion. To be clear, though, as an electric outboard owner, I think they're both brilliant and far preferable to a petrol outboard. In a future video, we'll see how these scores compare with those given by an e-propulsion owner. With the purchase price of an electric outboard being much higher than that of a gas or petrol outboard, we need a way of coming up with a comparable value so we can determine which is best for us. 
The way I will do this is look at the purchase price, the cost of ownership, and then deduct the amount I'd be willing to pay for each benefit from having an electric outboard. Let's first compare the purchase price. So the Torquedo in the UK was £2,049 or $2,950 in America, while a comparable petrol or gas outboard can be bought for about £800 or $1,125. This I'm going to add 10 times the annual maintenance or service charges so that you can see what it costs over 10 years. So the annual maintenance for an electric outboard is zero, and for a petrol or gas outboard, that's £150 or $200 a year, which gives us £1,500 or $2,000 over 10 years. That would give us a total cost of ownership over 10 years of £2,049 for the electric outboard and about £2,300 for the petrol engine. Now we need to put a value on the characteristics of each engine. Well, the biggest thing going for a petrol or gas outboard engine is it's very easy and cheap to add additional range. You can just have an extra fuel tank or a bigger fuel tank. So this is clearly a win for the petrol or gas outboard. I've never really found that there's insufficient range with my electric outboard because I don't tend to want to go too far in a small inflatable tender. But over the life of the engine, I would say that's worth maybe £500 or $625 to deduct from the total cost of the petrol engine. That's the only one, though, where the petrol engine wins and everything else the electric outboard wins. So let's put a value on those other aspects. Lack of the smell of petrol and oil is valuable to me because I've got a small boat and I'd happily pay £50 a year not to have that smell. So that's £500 or $625 over 10 years. I think the fire safety of a Torquedo is better than that of a petrol engine because you're not storing petrol and you're not pouring petrol. For me, that's worth at least £20 a year, so £200 over the life of the motor. Petrol engines would have to be stored on the transom. Uh, I've got a very limited space around the helm, and with the outboard mounting bracket on the transom, I found it quite uncomfortable at the helm seat. So for me, it was a big deal. Uh, I now put my electric outboard down in the stowage below, and for me, that's worth at least £100 over the life of the engine. I used to hate pull cord starting an outboard motor on a small tender. So for me, over the lifetime of the engine, ease of starting with an electric motor is easily worth £300 or $375. On top of that, outboards tend to be used intermittently. So you might not use one for several weeks or even a few months. And then when you go to start it, the fuel is stale and so it doesn't start very well. So for me, reliability is also worth an extra £300 over the lifetime of the engine. If we now add up the numbers at the top part of the table and then subtract all the numbers at the bottom, we can come up with a comparison value, which is simply a way of comparing the relative benefits to me of an electric outboard versus a petrol outboard. As you can see, the comparison number for the electric came up as £649 or $1,200, whereas for a petrol outboard, I got numbers of £1,800 or $2,500, which made it really clear that for me, it was a much better deal to have an electric outboard. Let me know in the comments how this comparison worked out for you. If you found this video helpful or enjoyable, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that like button and hit the bell icon to be notified of the next time we release a video. They're normally released on Thursday mornings. Look forward to seeing you again soon on the Boat Sheet.